friends, Mimi here. Welcome back to Kids Stories and More. Today's story is called Hoot. It's written by Jane Hissey. You see the cover there? Hopefully the glare is not too bad. Well, this story has a lot of stuffed animals in it. Do you sleep with stuffed animals? Do you like to collect stuffed animals? Mimi is a huge collector of stuffed animals. If you've seen some of our past videos, you know I got a huge collection, don't I? Well, you'll have to listen in because you might just find out the answer to what happens in the middle of the night. Sounds. You might find out. Is there really a dryer monster? Hmm. Tune in. Join me on the carpet. by Jane Hissey. It was the middle of the night and all the toys should have been fast asleep. But Little Bear was wide awake. He leaned over and tugged at Rabbit's ear. Wake up, he whispered. I heard a funny noise. What sort of noise? muttered Rabbit sleepily. Well, first there was a thump and then a woo, said Little Bear. Do you think it was a ghost? Probably just the wind outside, said Rabbit sitting up and staring into the darkness. Then they both heard the noise. Woo! It doesn't really sound like the wind, does it? said Little Bear nervously. Without warning, a white shape drifted past the bed. Rabbit and Little Bear dived under the covers. What was that? whispered Little Bear. I'm not sure, said Rabbit. Has it gone? I'm too scared to look, said Little Bear with his head still covered by the sheet, I'll wake Bramwell. He wriggled along under the covers and shook Bramwell's paw. Wake up, he whispered. There's something in the room. It's whizzing about saying, woo. Wind, I expect, said Bramwell. Why are you both hiding? We saw it, said Rabbit, but we didn't want it to see us. By now, all the toys were wide awake. It's the middle of the night, grumbled Duck. What are you all doing? We saw something white whiz past the bed, said Little Bear. And I suppose it said woo, said the Duck. How did you know, asked Little Bear. Old Bear was just about to tell everyone to go back to sleep when there was an even louder woo. This time it came from the other side of the room. He reached over and turned on the bedside light. I'm sure it's just the wind under the door, he said, but I better go and see. He slid down from the bed, rummaged through the drawer for the flashlight, and set off to investigate. While they were waiting for Old Bear to return, Bramwell showed the other toys how to make funny shadow pictures on the wall. Little Bear thought that he'd made a really good rabbit shape until he realized that it was a rabbit. So Little Bear made an elephant shadow instead, and Rabbit made a crocodile that could open and shut its mouth. The crocodile was just about to bite the elephant's trunk when Old Bear returned. I didn't see anything, he said, but someone has been here. All the things we left out have been tidied up and put away. Well, the wind doesn't tidy things up, said Little Bear, but I suppose a ghost might. Let's all go together and have a look. The toys jumped down from the bed and tiptoed across the room, peering into corners and behind the furniture, when they heard the whoo right above their heads. That's it! cried Little Bear. That's the noise! It's on top of the cupboard! Noises aren't usually on their own, muttered Duck. They come from something. As he spoke, something white swooped down and landed beside the toys. Hello, everyone, it said. Little Bear dived to safety behind Old Bear, and they all stared in amazement at a little white owl in a blue apron. Well, what are you all doing up in the night? asked Owl. You're usually fast asleep. We heard a sort of ghostly woo noise, said Little Bear, peeping out from behind Old Bear. That was me, said Owl. I always do it. That's why they call me Hoot. I heard a thump too, said Little Bear. Ah, uh -uh, that was my nest falling down, explained Hoot. 
Oh dear, replied Old Bear, where was your nest? Up there, replied Hoot, waving a wing at the tall cupboard. Only now it's down there, she said sadly, pointing at the floor by the cupboard. But why have we never seen you before, asked Little Bear. Owls sleep during the day, said Hoot, and they come out at night. You all do it the opposite way around. I was always careful not to wake you until my nest fell down, she added. The toys all followed Hoot over to the fallen nest. It's made of socks, said Bramwell in surprise, picking up one that had fallen out. Are they in pairs? Oh, no, said Hoot. I only use odd ones. I find them lying around. Socks are perfect for a nest. Nice and soft and warm. I always wondered where they went, said Little Bear. We've got a whole drawer full of socks that don't match. How will you get your nest back up, Hoot? Hoot pulled at the nest and a sock came away in her beak. I don't think I can, she said sadly. It will fall apart if I move it. Does your nest just have to be around and warm and soft? Asked Little Bear. That's right, said Hoot. Well, said Little Bear, I know something that will make a really good nest. Uh, what do you think he means? He rushed off with the flashlight and returned a few minutes later with an old woolly pom-pom hat. This won't fall apart, he said, climbing into the hat, and it's very cozy. You try it, Hoot. Hoot carefully lowered herself into the hat and snuggled down. Yes, it's lovely, she said. Thank you, little bear, but I wonder if I'll be able to fly with it. Old bear found a piece of string and gave it to Hoot. If you fly to your cupboard with this, he explained, we'll tie the hat to the other end and you can pull it up. Well, that's really good thinking, isn't it? Wonderful, said Hoot, stepping out of the nest. I'll see you later. Then spreading her wings, she flew right up to the top of the cupboard with the end of the string in her beak. Little Bear tied the other end of the string to the pom-pom hat, and Hoot began to pull. Just as the hat was leaving the ground, Little Bear gave a big leap and clung to the pom-pom. Hoot tugged hard on the string, and Little Bear and the pom-pom hat rose into the air. Hoot was too busy pulling to see what she was lifting up. So when Little Bear's ear suddenly appeared at the top of the cupboard, she nearly dropped the string in surprise. What are you doing? She asked, helping Little Bear up. I wanted to see what it was like up here, said Little Bear. But how will you get down? Asked Hoot. Hmm, I didn't really think about that, said Little Bear. Well, if you could help me put my new nest in place, I'll give you a ride down on my back, said Hoot kindly. Oh, that's very nice. See, they're helping each other out. Little Bear helped Hoot find just the right spot for her new nest. Then he climbed onto Hoot's back and she walked to the edge of the cupboard. Hold on tight, called Hoot, and with a big flap of her wings, she launched herself into the air. Look, I'm flying, called Little Bear, managing a quick wave to the others. They flew once around the room, swooped low over the bed, and then landed gently right beside Old Bear. I'm hungry now, said Hoot, as her passenger climbed down. But it's the middle of the night, said Little Bear. Exactly, said Hoot. Lunchtime for owls. She flew off again and returned with her lunch, a little pile of cheese and crackers wrapped in a handkerchief. Oh, lovely, cried Little Bear. A midnight feast. I don't think there will be enough for all of you, said Hoot doubtfully, as she carefully unwrapped the parcel of food. I wasn't really expecting guests. Don't worry, said Old Bear. We don't usually eat in the middle of the night so nobody will be very hungry. Um, I think I might be just a little bit, said Little Bear, staring at the crackers. Well, do join me, said Hoot. It'll be nice to have company for lunch. Old Bear realized that the other toys were beginning to look very sleepy, so when all the food had been eaten, he said it was time to say goodnight to Hoot and go back to bed. I'm sure we'll see you another night, he said. And we'll try not to be too noisy in the daytime, said Rabbit, now that we know you're asleep. Little Bear was so tired and full that he had to be carried off to bed. Very soon, all the toys were tucked in and fast asleep. In the morning, they found that Hoot had had a very busy night. All the socks were hanging from the end of the bed. They'd been sorted into pairs, the socks from Hoot's nest, and the matching ones from the sock drawer. 
The toys looked up at the cupboard. Thank you, Hoot, they whispered, and good night. They thought they heard a sleepy, ooh, but it might just have been the wind outside. So friends, did you like our story, Hoot? I loved it. <laughs> you know, me and stuffed animals. And I thought this was an adorable bedtime story. <coughs> Pardon me. A story great for teachers to share with their classrooms. And we learned a little bit something about owls, didn't we? What kind of animals are they? They are nocturnal animals. They are up during the night and sleep during the day. Interesting. Hmm. Nocturnal means nighttime. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story and I hope you'll join us again next week for some more stories on Kids Stories and More. Please check out the description below for all our social media. We are on TikTok now. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. Hopefully you will like, share, and subscribe to Kids Stories and More. Bye-bye.